Good afternoon, everyone. This is Vegas, and I'm here with Breakout Plays. We're going to talk about our two picks for the week. Mine is Apple, and then he'll be talking about Amazon. So let's just first get started. I just want to give you guys a little rundown on what is going on this week. I got to be honest, we still have a ton of earnings this week. We have Airbnb, Affirm, Disney, Dish, Fox, Robinhood, Electronic Arts, Oxy, which is obviously Warren Buffett's favorite, Roblox, which, by the way, is very connected with AI, uh, Teva, Under Armour, Wendy's. So we still got a lot of earnings are going on this week, so definitely ones to pay attention to. And then we have um, Monday, some events, Tuesday, Fed Speaker Williams, then Biden's talking about the debt limit. And then Wednesday, Catalyst on Wednesday is a CPI data. And then we have obviously CPI for Germany and also CPI and PPI for China. So definitely keep a watch on China stocks as well. And then we have um, jobless claims on Thursday and then another Fed speaker, Waller, on Thursday. And then Friday, we have the um, U.S. import-export prices, consumer sentiment. But this week, the catalyst for me will be the CPI data on Wednesday. Then we have a couple of shareholder meetings on Monday and uh, Tuesday, quite a few. We could see, you know, we could see here this list here is quite extensive. So a lot of conferences going on. There's obviously a lot of conferences happening in the healthcare sector, energy, Goldman Sachs materials, conference sector, JPM, battery cell series, women in business week happening, and the Oppenheimer Industrial Growth Conference. So quite a few conferences happening across the, the week. And then we have here, this is the economic calendar for the week. And just take note, okay, these two Fed speakers, Tuesday at 12.05, and then we have another one Thursday at 10.15, and then obviously CPI data Wednesday. So I would take note of this, these little, these three little events, because they're the ones that you want to pay attention to, um, you know, as the week goes on. So then we have, uh, let me just go back down, if I can go down here, uh, a list of earnings. Look at these earnings. I mean, this is just anything in brown is before market, blue is after market, but it's just nonstop earnings, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of earnings uh, to watch. So keep a watch on these um, earnings if there's any companies that interest you. SPY, you can see here, no change to the chart. A clear range is being built. You can see here, similar to those levels here. And we'll see again, the catalyst here, CPI. So let's go right into my pick for the week. I want to talk to you guys about Apple. And um, I'm going to talk to you about what's happened with the earnings report. You can see, first of all, very impressive. And Wall Street was kind of a little mixed on the forecast. And everyone kept saying, oh, Apple's going to tank. Apple's going to tank. Well, you know what? It didn't tank. So bottom line is you have to follow price action and stop listening to the noise in the market. So many people on Fintwit, on StockTwits, other social media platforms, they're going to say, you know, stock's garbage, stock's no good, stock's overpriced. Next thing you know, it's going to go without you. So just try to cut the noise. People on TV as well, a lot of talking heads on there. Just try to focus on what is in front of you and follow the price action because that is the bottom line, what matters, okay? So even I could say Apple's amazing, but if it's not amazing if the stock's not going up, right? So just follow the price action. So we could see here that uh, Tim Long, who's an analyst at Barclays, said that he gives it an equal rating on Apple. The growth rate is below the forecast. And um, he, so that was his comment. Then we have Dan Eves from Wedbush. He says he gives an outperform. He said the outlook was actually relatively upbeat. And says giving it that some confidence um, that it's riding out the macro storm. And you know what? Um, Goldman Sachs, Michael Ling, he has it a buy rating. And he also said better than expected iPhone sales and noted that since the company's tied to consumers, sometimes it has some risk in a weakening economy. But remember, that uh, they've generated over 50% from iPhones, which is highly dependent on upgrades. You know, I was offered an upgrade recently from my phone company, and I'm like, nah, I don't want to upgrade. I have an iPhone 12, and I really didn't care to upgrade to the to an iPhone uh, 14 because I have an iPhone mini, and they were offering me a mini, I think a iPhone mini 13 or 14, I think it's 14. And I'm like, what am I going to do with the same phone? I mean, I don't even do, I don't even take movies with the phone. So I'm not, you know, I just use it for talk, text, and some pictures here and there. But other than that, I don't really use the phone for many things. So it doesn't serve me any good. I would not be a good person to upgrade. <laughs> so I, I'll just keep it until it dies. 
Um, so moving on now to Apple. So good results there with Apple. So I want to show you the chart. This is the uh, weekly chart. Let me just pull it up here. Let me just let me just grab it. I'm sorry. Let me just grab my chart. Here we go. And uh, just loading the the chart here. Here we go. Okay, Apple. Wow, you're taking a while to load here. Okay, here we go. So with the Apple chart in particular, we want to make sure. Yeah, I'm looking for this to go towards. 176.25. Let me try to pull up the weekly chart. Okay. So I want to see Apple head towards 176.25. Okay. Because what I'd like to see is I'd like to see it break that resistance over 176.25. And if it does do it, okay, we're going to see um, some buyers step in. There has been some money flow in Apple since the earnings report. So if we can break that level, 176.25, I will go long on Apple. I'm still bullish on Apple. I still have some um, contracts in Apple, but I will actually go into some June contracts. And I am looking for Apple on a swing time frame to make its way right here. Let me show you right here towards 185. So look how high we're going to go here. I'd like to see it go to 185. So I'd love to see it go over this cloud and bring me to 185. So make note, over 176.25, I'm going to go long on Apple into some June contracts. And you can pick whatever strike you want. Try to go as close to the money as possible if you do take a trade. And uh, my stop loss will be under 170, but I really don't foresee Apple uh, going below 170. And I want to tell you something. Anytime Apple has pulled back down to 150 level, there has always been a lot of buyers come in. So Apple will never let their stock go below 150, barely goes below 150. And if it ever gets under there in the future, that is a beautiful spot to accumulate this beautiful stock. So love to see Apple get over. 176.25 and head straight towards 185. So that'll be my pick for the week. And looking for some uh, targets here, you know, like 180, 182.50, and then 185. And then now I'm going to turn it over to Breakout Place, who's going to talk about Amazon. And uh, let's see what he's got to say. But on that note, I want to wish you guys a great trading week. I'll catch up with you guys next week. And I'll let Breakout Plays take it over from here and see what he's got to say. Have a great trading day, guys. Okay, Vegas. So my pick for this week is going to be Amazon. It was a toss-up whether I was going to show Amazon or Crowd because I like both of them going into this week. So just to go over something about um, Amazon long-term, I like this company long-term anyway. Uh, I own some Amazon stock long-term. So... As you can see on Bar Chart's website, Amazon has acquired audio intelligence company Snackable late last year that has already raised 3.1 million in funding. They're an AI machine learning company that's going to help with, with the audio for podcasts and things on Amazon. So long term, I, I like the company anyway. I hold Amazon myself. But going into this week, as you can see on the weekly chart on the right, Amazon has been pretty choppy the past few weeks. We had some nice volume going in there last week with buyers pushing this back up and finishing the week on a hammer so going into this week if if we take a look at this daily on the left hand side if amazon can break 106 i like it at 110 if strength continues for the week but the targets going forward for intraday plays will be 108 109 50 and then hopefully we get that 110 50 area towards the end of the week but like i said it's, it's been choppy it's been slow at times but i do like this volume I like the way the daily is set up. I like the long-term uh, view on the company and where, where it's going, especially with artificial intelligence being the in thing at the moment. So I think there's only a strength going forward for this company. So as an intraday play, I'm looking for it to break 106 for some upside this week. So that's why I'll be watching Vegas. Hopefully you guys can catch it if it uh, triggers to the upside. And hopefully we can all make some cash on it. So yeah, going forward, I'll be watching Amazon closely this week.